Hello, welcome to today's video. In this video, we will be reading the story, The Three Little Dassies by Jan Brett. Today, we are going to focus on expression. When readers read, they often have expression that is shown in their voice. How do we know when to use expression? When we see different punctuation marks throughout the story. Let's take a look at pages 30 and 31 in today's story. Do you see the explanation marks? When we see explanation marks, it tell us that we must read with strong emotion. Do you see the quotation marks? Anything in a quotation mark is what the person in the story is saying. When we read things found in quotation marks, we must read it as if we were that person. We must pretend to be that character and make our voice fluctuate, meaning we must make our voice change as if we were that person. Let's read page 31 together. Follow along with me. Mama, daddy, aunties, uncles, and all their cousins, and Agamemnon too, had come to celebrate Welcome, the sisters cried, to a place cooler, to a place less crowded, to a place safe from eagles. Did you notice how my voice changed? I want you to try that with me. Repeat after me. Welcome, the sisters cried to a place cooler, to a place less crowded, to a place safe from eagles. Great job. Let's go to the cover of our story and we'll read it from the beginning. The Three Little Dassies by Jan Brett. As I read today, there will be opportunities for you to repeat after me. Remember, you're going to want to use strong emotions. Hot, hot, hot. The little Dassies were almost grown up and it was time for them to find their own place. Mimby, Pimby, and Timby waved goodbye to mama, daddy, aunties, uncles, and all their cousins and set out for the distant mountain. Come and visit us, they shouted. A place cooler, a place less crowded, a place safe from big eagles. Did you notice the quotation marks? Someone else was speaking. I want you to repeat after me. Come and visit us, they shouted. A place cooler a place less crowded, a place safe from big eagles. The sisters traveled all day and all night across the Nimby Desert, arriving at the foot of the mountain the next morning. This is where we will live, they agreed excitedly. Welcome! A squeaky voice called out from the siren. It came from a handsome, smiling Agama man. No one has lived here for a long, long time. Just me and a family of eagles up on the mountain. Eagles? The three little Dassies shivered. And the hot, hot sun? Where would they build their houses? Mimby eyed the long grasses. These grasses will make a lovely cool house, she said. And she set to work cutting, twisting, braiding, and bundling. She finished in no time. Be near and dear, sisters, she said, crawling inside for a nap. All right, friends, did you see the quotation marks? That lets us know that Mimby is speaking. I want you to repeat after me. These grasses will make a lovely cool house. 
be near and dear, sisters. Great job. Let's keep reading our story. Pimby spotted pieces of driftwood, silver from the sun, lying in the sand of the dry riverbed. These will make a fine wooden house, she said, and she set out about collecting as many pieces as she could find. When it was finished, she hung up a hammock and called out, be near and dear, sisters, while I rest my eyes. Timby looked at the rocks around their mountain. I will make a stone house, she said, but it won't be as easy to build as one made of grasses or sticks. And it wasn't. She had to work all day in the hot sun to get it finished in time to sleep in that night. A gamma man had been watching them. He was happy they were staying on. He had missed having company. The three little Dassies slept late into the morning as the sun rose higher and higher in the sky. The big old eagle who lived up on the mountain stretched his wings and flew down to look for a meal for his hungry chicks. Mimby woke up hungry and went outside. Suddenly, a long winged shadow passed over her. The eagle, she cried and hurried back into her grass house. Do you see the quotation marks and the explanation mark? That means Mimby is speaking again and she's showing strong emotion. Can you repeat after me? The eagle! Great job, let's keep going. I see you, Dassy, the eagle screeched and swooped down. I'll flap, I'll clap, and I'll blow your house in, he squawked, beating the air with his wings until the grass roof sailed off. The eagle grabbed Mimby and lifted her up, up, up to his nest. But the eagle was greedy. No sooner had he dropped Mimby into the nest than he spotted Pimby in front of her stick house far below. Two dassies would be double delicious, he thought, and down he went, feathers flying. Pimby looked up and saw him coming. She turned and ran back inside. The eagle landed and screeched, I'll flap and I'll flap and I'll blow your house in, he squawked. Twigs flew, sticks rattled until Pimby's stick house fell apart. Then, just like Mimby, she felt herself being lifted up in the sky and plunked down in the eagle's nest. Timby looked out to call her sisters to come for breakfast of tasty seed porridge, but instead of a grass house and a stick house, she saw a long shadow streaking across the sky. I see you, Dassy. Here I come. The eagle landed and shrieked, I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll blow your house in. He flapped and clapped and beat his wings. Dust and sand blew everywhere, but the stone house didn't move. He tried again, flapping and clapping even harder. Dust and sand got in his eyes, but the stone house didn't budge. When the dust settled, the stone house was still standing, but the eagle was coughing and sneezing. His wing feathers were bent and broken and he was missing tail feathers. Knowing when to quit, he hopped his way up to his nest. At least he had two Dassies waiting for his dinner. The eagle reached his nest, but the Dassies were gone. He looked down and saw them at the bottom of the mountain, heading for the stone house. 
It was his last chance. He streaked down toward the open chimney. Inside, the three sisters hugged each other. There's nothing like a stone house when there are eagles abundant, they cried. Just then, the eagle tumbled down the chimney. I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll... A hot blast from the fire hit him. Fly home for a nap, he squealed. As fast as he could, he squeezed back up the chimney and flew home. All black and singed from the smoky fire and Mimby, Pimby, and Timby never saw so much as a tail feather of that eagle ever again. Are you ready to practice? Here's another page with explanation marks and quotation marks, which means we must read with strong emotion. Mama, daddies, aunties, uncles, and all their cousins, and a gamma man too, had come to celebrate. Welcome, the sisters cried, to a place cooler, to a place less crowded, to a place safe from eagles. It's your turn. I want you to repeat after me. Welcome, the sisters cried, to a place cooler, to a place less crowded, to a place safe from eagles. And if you travel to Nambia today, you will see the Dassies living in stone houses when handsome Agava man looking out for them. As for the Peaky Eagles, they're easily spotted for their feathers are as black as soot. Congratulations, my friend. You have completed today's video on expression. When you read your next story, I want you to pay attention to the punctuation marks that you see. We talked about several of them today, explanation marks and quotation marks. When you read, I want you to show strong emotion. And when you read things found in quotation marks, I want you to get in character, pretend as if you were the person that was speaking. Have a great day, my friend. I will see you soon.